Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan and today, what in the heck are we gonna do in this video? Well, broadly, we are gonna think about how to define the concept of a mole and then use the mole concept to calculate the number of atoms, ions, or molecules in a sample of material. Now, I know the mole is a really fun time. We're gonna break this video down a little bit before we get into the excitement of doing those moles and talk first about the different parts of a chemical formula. And then we're gonna talk about how to determine what's called the formula mass or molar mass from any chemical formula. And we're gonna do this sort of as a starting point to using the mole concept when it comes to compounds. So first, let's start off just by talking about and recognizing that a chemical formula shows the kinds of elements and numbers of atoms or more practically numbers of moles of each element in the smallest representative unit of a substance. Now, when we're talking about covalent compounds, that smallest representative unit is called a molecule. But when we're talking about ionic compounds, that smallest representative unit is called a formula unit. And you might be thinking, why do we even need to distinguish between molecules and formula units? It's important to recall that with covalent compounds, we've got distinct units or molecules, as those atoms share the electrons in the covalent bond forming the molecule. However, in an ionic compound, recall that we don't have those discrete units. We have these crystal lattices, and the formula unit just shows us the smallest ratio of ions to give us an overall neutral charge. Now, a couple of important things about formulas that you're probably already familiar with. Recognize that subscripts that follow the symbols of an element will tell you the number of atoms, or more practically, and what we're really gonna focus on is it will also tell us the number of moles of that element or ion. Additionally, keep in mind that we're gonna start adding coefficients in front of the entire chemical formula, and that's gonna tell you the number of molecules, formula units, or again, more practically and more likely, gonna tell you the number of moles of that compound. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Here we've got a chemical formula, MgCl2. This is a formula unit representing the ionic compound magnesium chloride. What does it mean? Well, first, remember that magnesium has that understood subscript of one. Anytime an element or ion doesn't have any subscript written by it, it's understood to be one. But essentially, what this means is we've got one magnesium ion and two chloride ions that make up the formula unit magnesium chloride. And again, as you think about why that ratio is gonna happen, go back and think about how ionic bonds form. Metals lose electrons, nonmetals gain electrons to form charged atoms or ions, and they come together in such a ratio so that the overall charge of the compound is neutral. Again, keep in mind that ionic compounds form what we call a crystal lattice. And so the formula unit is just telling us what is the smallest ratio of those ions to give us that neutral compound. And again, you're gonna start seeing coefficients written in front of the entire chemical formula for that formula unit. What does that mean? What does that tell us? Well, remember that if we had just one formula unit, it was one magnesium ion and two chloride ions. Two formula units of magnesium chloride I mean, we're gonna have a total of two magnesium ions and four chloride ions. Essentially double what we had without that coefficient of two. Let's take a look at a covalent compound. We'll be looking at a molecule of carbon dioxide. Again, like the ionic compounds, anytime you see an element without a subscript, it's implied or understood to be one. But let's interpret this. Again, it means that we've got one atom of carbon two atoms of oxygen. Keep in mind with the covalent compounds, we aren't ripping electrons away to form ions. Those electrons are being shared to form discrete molecules. So we don't have the lattice, again, discrete individual molecules in those covalent compounds. Again, you're gonna start seeing coefficients added in front of covalent compounds as well. Just recognize it does the same thing. It's gonna multiply each of the subscripts in your chemical formula to determine the total number of each of the things in that compound. So for example, a single molecule of carbon dioxide would have one carbon and two oxygen. Two molecules will have two carbons and four oxygen. Now, lastly, one quick example here that involves a polyatomic ion always gives students the most trouble. Recognize that anything in this chemical formula that does not have a subscript, it's understood to be one. 
Now, you want to be careful with your polyatomic ions. What does this mean? We've got one calcium ion and two nitrate ions. But remember that within each nitrate ion, we've got one nitrogen and three oxygen. So sometimes it's easier to write it out like this. No! I'm sure that's what you're all screaming in your head. No! <sighs> But if you do it like this, it may help you understand the total number of each of the atoms in your compound. Same thing applies when we've got a coefficient in front of a compound like this. Recognize that you'll take your coefficient and multiply it by each of the subscripts to give you the total number of each of the things in your compound. So as we take a look at this, again, a single formula unit of calcium nitrate would have one calcium and two nitrates, or one calcium and two no's. Two formula units then would have two calcium ions and four nitrate ions. Okay, last couple of things then. Recognize that you can simply sum together the masses of all the atoms represented in the formula of any molecule or formula unit, and we call it its formula mass. Units for formula mass are in atomic mass units and represent the mass of a single formula unit or molecule. However, we are more commonly going to be working with molar mass. This is the mass of one mole of that pure substance. And numerically, it's equal to the formula mass, except our units will be grams per mole, far more practical than atomic mass units. Again, the focus here with molar mass is to recognize that your units will be grams per mole and it's the mass of one mole of that compound. All right, and that does it for this video. Have a fantastic day.